Why News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The members of the House Committee on Justice have expressed dismay over Attorney Larry Gadon's presentation of the contents of the impeachment complaint he filed against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Grace Cassin will tell us why. The House Committee on Justice saw a number of loopholes in the allegations stated in the impeachment complaint of Attorney Larry Gadon filed against Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. The lawmakers discovered Gadon holds no authentic documents that would prove the alleged falsification by Sereno of the draft temporary restraining order or CRO issued by Associate Justice Teresita de Castro last May 2013 for the case involving the senior citizen's party list. You mentioned about a draft of the order to the Office of Respondent Sereno. May I know if this draft is attached to the complaint? No, Your Honor. Do you have any draft in your possession right now? No, Your Honor. In other words, the allegation that there is a draft sent to the Office of the Respondent is not based on authentic records. During the hearing on impeachment rap, Gadon could not also say the complete information regarding his accusations against the High Tribunal's top magistrate. Why did she have to uh, give this draft to the Chief Justice? If not for her to make modifications. The, the best uh, person to answer that, Your Honor, that's just a state of mind of Justice De Castro, Your Honor. Ito ay nasa loob. Paano mo nalaman sino nagsabi sa'yo? I first read it in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. I, I asked the reporter. Because of this, some lawmakers were dismayed as to why the impeachment complaint was declared sufficient in form and substance. Lubalabas ngayon, yung complainant ay walang personal knowledge. Sinasabi niya, it's based on authentic documents. Wala naman na authentic documents. Napatunayan natin na walang alam si Gadon sa complaint na pinail niya. Paulit-ulit naman yung sagot niya na hindi siya ang dapat sasagot. Meanwhile, House Committee on Justice Chairman Reynaldo Umali says the committee has the power to retrieve copies of documents that would help strengthen the impeachment complaint. Uh, we have to build our case because we cannot go to uh, Senate uh, as an impeachment court without all of this. Meanwhile, the lawyer of Sereno failed to defend the Chief Justice during the hearing earlier. In a vote of 30 and 4, the committee did not grant the request of Sereno to allow her be represented by her lawyers and to conduct cross-examination and confront the witnesses the complainant will present during the hearing. This is why the lawyers did not finish the hearing and decided to leave. Wala po naman batas nagsasabi that uh, the uh, Chief Justice has the uh, statutory right to confront witnesses, wala po. Yung right to close examination, nandun sa rules nila. Sila ang nagtanggal nun sa amin. Wala, hindi namin hinihingi na special favor yan. In the next hearing of Congress, the lawmakers will invite 14 Supreme Court Associate Justices and the Clerk of Court, as well as a member of the media. The House Committee says it will conduct a marathon hearing next week to finish discussing the 27 allegations stated in the complaint. The committee member is target to vote on the impeachment complaint on December 13. Grace Kasten, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Good news for all government employees as you will receive another increase in salary next year. Abby Santa Ines will tell us why. The government has allocated 24 billion pesos fund in the 2018 proposed budget for the third tranche of the salary increase, which will benefit 1.2 million government employees. This is part of the Executive Order No. 201 or the Salary Standardization Law, which was signed under the former administration Aquino, implementing the compensation adjustment of government employees through four tranches. The salary adjustment will be implemented starting January 2018. This covers the compensation package of all civilian workers under the three branches of government, constitutional commissions, and state universities and colleges. Ricardo Villarreal, who is from Marilao, Bulacan, has been working in Malacanang for 28 years already. From being a simple clerk in 1989, he is now an administration assistant in the Presidential Communications Operations Office. One of his daughters already graduated from college through his job with the help from his wife, who is a public school teacher. He believes an additional pay is a great help to sustain their daily expenditures. 
Hanggang ganun, nagpapasalamat kami sa government, kahit pa paano, at least eh, tinitignan nila yung welfare ng empleyado. Dagdag pa rin yun, kahit pa paano, nagpapasalamat kami talaga ron. Dahil maigi na kaysa sa wala. Meanwhile, a draft joint resolution authorizing the increase in base pay of military and uniform personnel has been endorsed by the executive branch to the Congress. If approved, the base pay of the uniform personnel of the Department of National Defense, Department of Interior and Local Government, Philippine Coast Guard, and National Mapping and Resource Information Authority will increase. So the soldiers can definitely look forward to a doubling of their pay by January 1, 2018. The fourth tranche of salary increase will be implemented in 2019. Abby Santa UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Senate has finalized its version of the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion, or the TRAIN Bill. The Senators agreed to include the amendment that seeks to, to provide tax exemptions, not just for employees, but also for individuals earning not more than 250,000 pesos a year. Here's why from Mel Maribuho. Several senators seeks to provide fair treatment to employees and businessmen with small earnings. This has been the basis for the approval of the Senate to increase the personal income tax exemption to the original proposal of Department of Finance of 250,000 pesos from 150,000 pesos. This means the imposition of 20% tax will affect individuals earning above 250,000 pesos yearly in personal income. Sorry, sorry, store ka or you're a corporation, maliit na tindahan ka, pero corporate, corporation ka, kung ang income mo, 250,000 and below, dapat zero din yung tax mo. So ngayon, yung minimum wage na 250 or the minimum exemption of 250 applies whether you are self-employed, nagtatrabaho ko para sa sarili mo, kolumnista ka. The tax exemption ceiling will remain at 82,000 pesos for the 13th month pay and other bonuses. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lacson is pushing for the reduction of the value-added tax exemption. The senator wants to lower it to 10% from the current 12%. Bakit dumagustos ng dumagustos at naubos na naubos yung collection ng VAT? Because of the exemptions na napakarami nga, 143. Parang pagsamahin mo yung ilang countries sa ASEAN, mas marami pa rin tayo exemptions eh. Dahil nga because of... Not, not necessarily selfish interest, but I would like to call it advocacy no, ng iba't ibang legislators. However, according to Senator Angara, although the VAT rate cannot be lowered, sectors that avail of exemptions may be lessened. Ay, hindi, hindi bababa yung VAT. It's still at 12%. We're just repealing the barriers for special laws, special sectors. So. The senator assures that the privileges for senior citizens, cooperatives, and persons with disabilities will remain. Because of the amendments, the government's tax collection might increase to up to 140 billion pesos in its first year of its implementation. Meanwhile, Senate Committee on Economic Affairs Chairperson Senator Sherwin Gatchalian does not believe that shifting the country's form of government to federalism will result in imposition of higher taxes. No, it's not meant to overtax and overburden the taxpayer. It's meant to reallocate resources within the national and the local. Former Supreme Court Chief Justice Hilario Davide Jr. says shifting into a federal form of government will result into more bureaucracies and enforcement of two tax systems. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Meanwhile, the representative of Axe OFW party list has filed a petition with the Supreme Court to stop the procurement of the Land Transportation Office of Driver's License Cards. Roderick Mendoza tells us why. Axed OFW party list representative Jan Bertiz is asking the Supreme Court to stop the Land Transportation Office from procuring driver's license cards with five-year validity. The lawmaker says the 836 million peso project is questionable since it has no appropriation from the Congress. Bertis points out this is a violation of the Constitution and must be stopped and nullified. There's no uh, appropriated fund for driver's license and uh, uh, which is for 2016 and 2017. Nang sa ating saligang batas na dapat lahat ng uh, budget ng agency ay appropriated by Congress. Walang specific in regards to uh, procurement of driver's license. 
Among the respondents in the petition were Executive Secretary Salvador Medjaldea, Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade, Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno, and LTO Chief Assistant Secretary Edgar Galvante. Bertiz blames LTO for its negligence. Alam naman natin na matagal ng problema to eh. Uh, they have all the time uh, to prepare uh, para mag-submit ng uh, kanilang uh, uh, budget. Uh, I-specify nila itong uh, driver's license. Pero what they have done is uh, unconstitutional. His lawyer says while the petition may be another discomfort to motorists, they cannot just let this violation to pass. Oo nga, mukhang sa tingin natin, pampahirap ng mga motorista. Pero may saligang batas. Kailangan sundin natin yan. That is the supreme uh, law of the land. Otherwise, magkakaroon tayo ng anarchy. They also called on the president to look into the alleged corruptions in LTO. The LTO chief refuses to comment on the allegations for now, saying he has not read the petition yet. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. In other news, Pagasa forecasts more rains in the following months and warns of possible release of water, especially in Magat Dam. Here's why from Ray Pelayo. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or Pagasa has released a La Nina advisory as there is 70% possibility that the phenomenon will occur in the coming months. This means that the country is likely to experience above normal rainfall due to higher sea surface temperature in western Pacific. Pagasa forecasts around five tropical cyclones that may enter the Philippine air responsibility until May, one or two of which might form in December. And due to the existence of the northeast monsoon, tropical cyclones are likely to make landfall in the country. Possibly po na magkaroon tayo ng malakas na bagyo ito, pero hindi po natin sinisigurado na kasing lakas po ni Yolanda. But for precautionary measures, we, we should be prepared for the worst. Pagasa assures enough supply of water in dams around the country, but Magat Dam in Isabela may post danger in nearby areas. By uh, second to third week ng uh, December, baka po ito mapuno. So, yun po ang kinatatakotan natin. The Weather Agency also notes that the country will still experience cold weather this season, but not as low as usual. Pagasa will conduct climate forums in the provinces to make residents aware of the possible effect of La Nina. Ray Pelayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Pasig City. And several parts of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia have been submerged in flood water after almost two hours of continuous downpour of rain. Even abroad, Filipinos never fail to display that instinct spirit of Bayanihan. Here's why from Bong Duquesa. The traffic flow in several roads of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia had been paralyzed after experiencing almost two hours of deep downpour of rains yesterday. The flood water reached waist deep on the Medina Road, Kings Road, Malik Road and Andalus Road, causing some vehicles to malfunction. This video footage shows residents pushing vehicles submerged in flood water. Meanwhile, the Bayanihan spirit of Filipinos prevailed amid the calamity. In a video shared by Jeddah resident Ibrahim Hamami, a Filipino can be seen descending in the deep flood water to rescue a Saudi national trapped inside his car. The Filipino national Dawood Farifada Balindong, 39 years old from Pagadian City, had the Saudi national wear a life vest and help him cross the flood water. According to Balindong, Saudi rescuers prohibited him from going near the site of the incident due to current danger and that the said vehicle was already near the drainage. However, Balindong hesitated and pushed through with saving the life of the Saudi national. Inakita ko na hirap sila mag, mag rescue tapos hinihintay pa nila yung mga materials nila, mga tali nila. Sabi ko sa Saudi na yun, huwag nila sabi ko hintayin sabi ko kasi sabi ko, yung sasagyan sabi ko, papaurong na sabi ko. Sabi niya, wala sabi niya nga ako sang lumusong dyan kasi sabi niya, butas dyan banda eh. Sabi ko, alis kasi sabi ko, ako ang sabi yung lumusong. Sabi niya, hindi, bawal sabi niya. Inangita po nila yung left jacket, nakita ko na hindi umabot. I sabi ko, voluntary ko na, ma ma madali lang ko sabi ko, ano yun, uh, tulungan kong araw po na yun kasi sumisigaw na siya na magpapatulong eh. Since the video was posted on social media, it gained various reactions from Saudi nationals. Said Ali thanked Malindong for rescuing his fellow Saudi. 
The video of Balindong saving the Saudi national has already been shared 11,000 times. Aside from Balindong, the group Filipino League of OFW Volunteers and Empowerment or LOVE also helped Filipinos who were trapped in their vehicles amid the flooding. Sir, ako yung nagpapasalamat sa rescue team ng LAB dahil binata ko yung sasakya ko dahil na nabaraho na ako doon sa may tapat ng gasoline na doon sa may madain. According to the General Authority of Meteorology and Environmental Protection, the rains will continue in Jeddah until Sunday. The Philippine Consulate in Jeddah meanwhile reminds Filipino nationals there to take extra caution and avoid flooded areas. Bong Duquesa, UNTV, News and Rescue, Saudi Arabia. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority apprehended more than 200 motorcycle riders along EDSA today. Here's why from Joe Anano. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA begins today the stricter implementation of the motorcycle lane policy along the stretch of EDSA. On its first day, the agency already apprehended more than 200 motorcycle riders. As of 12 noon earlier, MMDA made 154 physical apprehensions, while 80 motorcycle riders were apprehended through the agency's no-contact apprehension policy. Along EDSA Qmart southbound lane, MMDA apprehended a number of disobedient motorcycle riders using the yellow lane instead of the designated blue lane. Some motorists can also be seen cutting into other lanes and returning to the fourth lane only upon noticing the presence of traffic enforcers. The apprehended motorcycle riders argued that they were not aware of today's first day of the implementation of the motorcycle lane. Other motorists also cut into the wrong lane to avoid the bumper-to-bumper -bumper flow of vehicles. Busy po kasi lagi sa trabaho eh. Kaya di ko rin po na ano, na talitaan na may ganito pala motorcycle lane. The MMD meanwhile argued they committed no neglect in reminding the public about the enforcement of the motorcycle lane. Uh, yung kampanya natin, lastik pa yan, nag-dry run tayo and everything, no? ginawa natin yan. Yung campaign natin, siguro naman eh. Hindi kami nagkulang sa paalala sa kanila, social media, sa media, sa print, nandiyan yan. No? Pero still, may mga apprehension pa rin po tayo, may matitigas pa rin ang ulo. The agency notes that although the implementation of the policy has little effect in easing the traffic congestion along EDSA, it would help fix the system and instill discipline on motorists. Joan Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. The Southwest Integrated Terminal Exchange or SWTEX in Paranaque City is expected to help ease traffic congestion along EDSA beginning next year. Rajel Adora will tell us why. Transport authorities believe one way of easing traffic congestion along EDSA is to no longer allow provincial buses to ply there. They argued it would help lessen the huge volume of vehicles plying on EDSA daily. With this, the government construct the Southwest Integrated Terminal Exchange or SWITEX in Paranaque City, which is expected to be completed in April. The said project is part of the Build, Build, Build program of the current administration. The 4-hectare SWITEX is the first ever intermodal terminal in the country. It can accommodate commuters coming from Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, and Quezon Province. According to Transportation Undersecretary Thomas Orbos, Swedex would greatly help in easing traffic congestion on EDSA. Ito magawa po ito, isang libong gusto ang nawawala sa EDSA at saka po dito sa papuntang Boas Boulevard. Ibig po sabihin ng dalawang bang libong katao araw-araw ang makikinabang dito. The intermodal terminal is expected to provide passengers from Zauden or Zon easy access to public utility transportations like LRT Line 1, jeepneys, UV Express vans, and city buses with routes to Inner Metro Manila. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority Chairman Danilo Lim assures passengers and drivers that the terminal will be convenient for them. The Southwest Integrated Terminal Exchange will be a huge improvement from the terminals we see along EDSA. Again, it will resemble an airport with multi-level platforms. The Duterte administration also plans to construct another intermodal terminal in Santa Rosa, Laguna and other key points in the country. Rigel Adora, UNTV News Rescue, Philippines. Next on Y News. 
Blogger Sasso clarifies tirade against BBC journalist Jonathan Head during the ASEAN summit. Senator Antonio Trillanes IV files cyber libel charges against thinking Pinoy blogger RJ Nieto. And the Department of Justice clears former Customs Chief Nicanor Faeldon and other customs officials in the billion peso drug smuggling case. Why News will be right back. of the Busan Universal Rails Incorporated or BURI is appealing to have a dialogue with President Rodrigo Duterte. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Officials from the Busan Universal Rails Incorporated or BURI has sent their letter of request to the office of the President to ask for a formal dialogue with President Rodrigo Duterte. Attorney Mary Chris Pahate, the external legal affairs of BURI says they wanted to have a personal dialogue with the President to explain their side and let him know the real situation and problems about the operations of MRT3. It's not too late. Nung kami yung nagtatrabaho, Hindi mo kailangan mag-apologize personally sa publiko para sa operations ng MRT, MRT3. Kung bibigyan ho kami ng audience ni President Duterte, may explain ho namin kung ano ba talaga yung nangyari sa MRT3. Ano yung performance ng, bu ng buri, ano yung nangyari sa kontrata namin para ho, hindi lang puro chismis yung naririnig niya from uh, the other executive officials. Buri again insists that they already have discussed with DOTR and MRT management about the problems on rails, arguing that not all glitches should be blamed on the maintenance provider. Apart from this, there are also some design flaws, such as the structure wherein some rails are elevated, while some are on the ground level. As of now, Buri has yet to receive confirmation regarding their request to the president. The company wants to be granted with another chance to fix the system of MRT. Meanwhile, despite calls for Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugadi's resignation, amid the issues of the MRT, President Duterte insists that he still have his trust on Tugadi. I will not do that. I have full trust in uh, sub, uh, Tugadi uh, that he can uh, correct the mistakes there. Only the President can ask me to resign. Uh, hindi lahat ng problema in address your resignation. Uh, only the President can ask me to resign. I serve at the pleasure of the President and no one else. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte orders the cancellation of all planned peace talks with the Communist Party of the Philippines, New People's Army, New Democratic Front, effectively suspending again the peace process. Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process, Secretary Jesus Duresa, cited the recent tragic and violent events committed by the rebels led to the President's decision to suspend the talks. Nevertheless, Duresa hopes this setback will only be temporary as the government remains steadfast and undeterred in attaining sustainable and just peace in the country. Opinion columnist and Filipino blogger Sas Sasot clarifies that she did not maliciously attack BBC journalist South Asia correspondent Jonathan Head during the ASEAN summit. Here's why from Aiko Miguel. You can contact me anytime. And these you know people that. revealed my exact outfits in the Netherlands. And you didn't care. The only difference is she is being backed by the Liberal Party of the Philippines. And you can't deny this because she was part of the campaign team of President Aquino in 2010, the campaign team of, Ro of Rojas and Robredo. So, so who made her connection with the BBC? Sasa Rogando Sasot explained on the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon the reason why she confronted BBC journalist and Southeast Asia correspondent representative Jonathan Head during a ASEAN summit. According to the opinion columnist and Filipino blogger, the incident stemmed from the public perception that pro-Duterte bloggers like her are paid trolls of the current administration.
I was so emotional kasi yung sinabi ko yung paid troll network. Sabi ko sa kanila na ganito kasi ang problema. Before you interview us, you already have this preconceived idea Now we are a paid troll network. And you don't know how OFWs really fought for this president. They spend their own resources to do this. Tapos yung i-accuse sila ng paid troll network na pinapropagate ng... It was so ano, insulting to them. Kaya ang sabi ko, you're not in, on, kaya may mga ganun ako ninyo, you're not only insulting me, but you're insulting a lot of Filipinos. The staunch Duterte supporter also said she has long been arguing with Head on social media. Sasut noted she became more irritated against a journalist when the BBC gave the personality behind an anti-Duterte blog, Joe Verlario, the opportunity to air her side after disclosing her identity. Laurio is behind the Pinoy Yahoo blog. Head, on the other hand, reasoned they are just worried over the safety of Laurio, who gained more bashers after revealing her identity. Okay, if you are concerned about blogger safety, bakit hindi niyo ako in-interview? This is, ito yung, ito yung mga context niya. According to Sasot, Head offered her the right to reply to air her side. But until now, the BBC journalist has not yet contacted her. Di ba, he offered me right of reply. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he said na bibigyan niya ako, but he didn't really contact me. How is it possible that you give Jover Lario a platform but you're not writing anything good about the Duterte administration? I emphasize it. Sabi ko, yeah, mag-write of reply ako, but the point is, hindi naman tungkol sa akin yun. Uh -oh. It's just about the government and I know na yung government nag-ask ng, uh, ng right of reply. Sasot also expressed dismay over other journalists who she claims did not give her the chance to explain and clarify why she confronted the BBC journalist. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The office of the U.S. Embassy and in and its affiliated offices are closed tomorrow, November 23. This is in line with Thanksgiving Day celebration in the United States. The operation of the embassy will resume on November 24, Friday. Senator Antonio Trillanes IV files charges of cyber libel against the Thinking Pinoy blogger RJ Nieto. Here's why from Abby Santa Ines. Pagandaan na lang niya, kumuha siya ng uh, magagaling na obogado kasi solid na solid na itong kaso na ito. So, we'll see you in court. Senator Antonio Trillanes IV has formally filed a libel suit at the Pasay City Prosecutor's Office against RJ Nieto, the person behind the blog, Thinking Pinoy. The complaint stemmed from Nieto's post in which U.S. President Donald Trump allegedly identified Trillanes as a drug lord. According to the senator, the content of Nieto's post is malicious since in the transcript of President Trump's statement, his name was not mentioned. The columnist who wrote the article, which was Nieto's source, has previously apologized to Trillanes, so the senator did not include the columnist in the complaint. Nagre-research kayo, pero kung nagkamali, meron kayong is either eratum or uh, ayan, public apology. And I accepted that. Pero siya, si Nieto, na ang ginamit niyang basis ay yung artikulo na yun, eh naninindigan pa. The senator says what Nieto did is a form of cyber libel, therefore he must face imprisonment and fine of up to 1 million pesos for civil damages. Trillanes adds this measure is to prevent others from doing what Nieto did. Hindi naman tayo balat sibuyas, pero may mga limits. So ito lumagpas na sa, sa limit. The, we need to act on it. Kasi yung mga bloggers na yan, eh, mamimiha sa yan. Nieto, on the other hand, states on his Thinking Pinoy blog, he has not received a copy of the complaint. Nieto further comments, the constitution must be amended and lawmakers must undergo psychiatric tests. Abi Sandinez, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice has cleared former Bureau of Customs Commissioner Nicanor Faildon, former Customs Intelligence Chief Neil Estrella, and other customs officials in the 6 billion peso drug smuggling case. The panel of prosecutors dismissed the charges against them after the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PDEA, failed to clarify the acts or commissions supposedly committed by the former customs officials. The DOJ also cleared several NBI agents who were also charged by PDEA. However, businessmen Richard Tan, Kenneth Dong, and customs broker Mark Taguba and TJ Marceliana and five others 
were indicted for importation of illegal drugs. There is no bail recommended. Indigenous people in Mindanao are calling on the Department of Education to grant them accreditation. However, DepEd explains it will not be easy for them to receive the necessary permits. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Lumad schools in Mindanao, particularly in Davao, Sok Sargent, and Caraga area, seek to have formal accreditation and formal registration from the Department of Education. But based on the dialogue between Indigenous Peoples Coordinator and Legal Officers of Lumad Groups and Yusek Alberto Muyot of DepEd Legal Affairs, DepEd discovered that most teachers in IP schools in Mindanao lacks Professional Regulation Commission or PRC license. Yusek Muyot explains that based on Department Order No. 21, or the guidelines on recognition of private learning institutions serving indigenous people's learners. Permits can only be issued to schools with licensed officials or administrators. Ang importante po ay yung pong supervisor po ng eskwelahan ang may lisensya. So we agreed that as long as meron pong isang lisensyadong teacher sa bawat isa sa kanilang mga ina-apply na eskwelahan, uh, maaari na pong makonsider po yung kanila pong uh, application. Supervisors of the schools, meanwhile, vowed to help the teachers acquire the necessary license. In line with this, DepEd will send a team who will help process the licenses of teachers. The team will also help coordinate with LGUs for the construction of additional IP schools. We committed na doon po sa tatlong divisions kung saan po nila gusto mag-train ang eskwelahan, ay bibigyan po namin sila ng technical assistance uh, upang doon po sa mga requirements ay matulungan po sila na makapag-comply po doon sa mga requirements. Secretary Leonor Briones emphasizes that they will make sure to assist the indigenous children, especially that their education is one of the priorities of DepEd. We're talking of more than 2.7 million indigenous people's children who are enrolled in the educational system. We're also talking of more than 2,000 schools where majority, at least 80%, of the students are also indigenous peoples. Our policy applies to all schools which are registered, recognized, and where children of indigenous peoples are fully integrated. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre reassures the relatives of the victims in Maguindanao massacre of support from the Department of Justice in getting justice. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre has met on Monday over 30 relatives of the victims of Maguindanao massacre. He says they are accompanied by their lawyer, Attorney Nana Santos to inquire on what could the Department of Justice do more in helping their case. We assure the relatives of the victims that the uh, Department of Justice will not waver in its support for uh, to give justice to them. Kaya ta uh, hindi magbabago ang aming pagsuporta sa kanila at kung mayroon pa kaming magagawang suporta aside from being the uh, official prosecutor of this case, gagawin po namin. Aguirre says he knows that the trial of the cases is dragging on because of the number of victims and accused. In the past eight years, 115 accused were already arrested. Two of them were discharged as state witnesses. Four died in detention including Andal Ampatuan Sr. and five were already acquitted. Currently, 103 accused remain on trial before the Sala of Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes of the Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 221. 31 accused have already concluded the presentation of their defense while 34 others are still presenting their evidence. The case has passed through six justice secretaries already and Aguirre wants the case finished during his term. May mukhang nakikita na natin ang uh, the light at the end of the tunnels at uh, palagi ko hindi na matatagalan sapagkat yun ay marami dun sa kanilang mga depensa ay mag a na lang ng mga previous uh, documentary evidence or testimony. Kaya at, uh, hopefully, sabi kong ganyan, na ako na maging kahuli-huli ang uh, DOJ Secretary 
na dadaanan itong Maguindanao na sa kaya at ito'y matatapos na at magkakaroon lang tayo ng desisyon. The Supreme Court has previously issued guidelines that the trial court may render judgment separately on the accused who have concluded their defense. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Teachers joined UNTV and MCGI volunteers in a visit to Tam Duk Orphanage in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Here's why from RJ Timoteo. Nadia and Baucham are both working as teachers in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. With their Filipino friends, the two volunteered to join the visit in Tam Duk Orphanage in District 4. The volunteers of UNTV and Members Church of God International or MCGI. <laughs> The group entertained the children by playing with them as well as teaching them how to dance and sing. They also provided the children with their needs like milk, yogurt, diapers, toys and books. The management of the orphanage, meanwhile, recognizes and thanks the volunteers for visiting and helping the children. They are hoping the group of volunteers will return again to bring smiles to the faces of the children who are left without parents to guide them. RJ Timoteo for Serbisyong Kasangbahay. Coming up on Y News. The United Nations Command accuses North Korea of violating the Armistice Agreement in crossing the border to chase defector. The United States immigration gives Haitians 18 months to stay as U.S. President Donald Trump decides to terminate the temporary protected status program. And uh, Kuya Daniel's advocacy film, Isang Araw Ikatlong Yugto, movie Filipino and international audience in a special screening in Italy. More from Y News after this break. Miss Philippines Rachel Peters thanks Filipinos for supporting her in the Miss Universe pageant, though she says she is starting to feel the pressure now that the pageant's coronation night is drawing near. Leslie Lombo and Will tell us why. It's been tough because um, it's been really draining. Um, we all become amazingly beautiful and we all the world. But um, I think that you know, it's really a test of your strength, your strength, how much you know yourself, um, your patience, everything. So I think um, we're all going to come out winners because we're all coming out next. This was how Philippines bet Rachel Peters described her feeling days before the big night of the Miss Universe 2017 pageant. Nevertheless, Peters is thankful for the warm support she gets from her fellow Filipinos as well as to those praying for her and voting for her on the online poll. Meanwhile, Miss Universe candidates attended a charity event today for children with cleft lips. The candidates created personalized handheld mirrors during a Smile Train event at the Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. The beauty queens will give the personalized handheld mirrors to children with cleft lips who will use the mirrors to see their faces for the first time after undergoing surgery for their condition. The Miss Universe organization is the official partner of Smile Train in gathering sponsors and giving free cleft repair surgery. Enjoying her last days as the reigning Miss Universe, Iris Mitina meanwhile says she wants to return to the Philippines after transferring the Miss Universe crown this year. 
girl, I miss the Philippines so much. I really wanted to go back to Philippines during my year of Miss Universe with my slash and everything. I didn't have the chance, but I hope I will come back after my year. The Miss Universe Coronation Night will be held Sunday night in Las Vegas. Leslie Longbowen, UNTV News and Rescue. Kuya Daniel said Vokas si film isang araw ikatlong yugto moved the Filipino and international audience in a special screening in Italy. Jovic Burmas will tell us why. And then the lesson that I learned in this movie is it doesn't matter what people can make, make us but feel bad or hurt us so we can't pay the same way we always remember what the Jesus Christ suffered and then the Christ so we ha always have to do good to others instead of paying with the revenge this is how Irish national Maria Jovita Borges described her emotions and learnings from the film Isang Araw Ikatlong Yugto written and directed by Kuya Daniel Razon Despite not being able to understand the Filipino language, Borges said she cried at the start of the film, especially during the scene showing a father being cruel to his family. For Mary Jane Gomez, she sees herself in one of the characters as it portrays how to become a mother. Siguro nga nasa akin ang lahat. Pero saan ko dadalhin lahat ng to sa impyerno? Dahil wala akong magulad na gumagabay sa akin. Kasi busy-busy kayo sa pungukolekta ng pera. Uh, maganda po yung pelikula. Maganda po yung lesson doon kasi bilang ina, ang nanay po yung ina ng tahanan, ilaw, no? So dapat tayo yung nagpapalaki sa mga anak natin, tayo dapat yung laging ready. At tinamaan po ako kasi nakita po yung responsibility ng pagiging ina. Some of the audience also shared their experience in watching the advocacy film which they believe mirrors everyone's life. Sobrang sulit po ang naiwan pong pangpatibay po sa amin yung kahit walang wala ka na yung na, nasa kamay mo na yung paraan ng paggawa ng mabuti dapat igawa mo pa rin ng mabuti sa kapwa yun. Nakakatouch po yung eksena na kahit po lubi po ay pwede pong makatulong sa kapwa. Kahit may sakit po siya na asma, eh, gusto niya pong tumulong pa sa iba kasi po tinulungan po siya before ni Kuya Daniel. Kuya Daniel Razon, meanwhile, is glad with the positive reactions the film got from its audience. He's hoping that the advocacy film would give inspiration to the audience in their daily lives. Ayun naman ang ating uh, gustong maipakita, yung realities of life at uh, papaano natin ididil ang buhay na nandun tayo sa pagkatakot sa Panginoon at uh, pagsunod doon sa kanyang mga salita. Because this is the kind of uh, environment that we have now. Kailangan natin talaga na mapaalalahanan ang uh, bawat isa sa iba't ibang pamamaraan at uh, kasama na dito yung uh, pagpapakita uh, ng uh, realidad ng buhay sa pelikula. Kuya! Jovic Burmans, UNTV News and Rescue, Bureau. Those are the reasons behind the news, November 22, 2017. I am Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know... We will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why, why News. news.